I would like to share a story with you. A story that challenged me to my very core. This story highlights the journey of a young man who was failing high school, seemed to be disinterested in academics, hanging around some of the wrong crowd, and was just simply struggling growing up. He was raised by a single mom out in the Midwest. He promised his mother that he would take the SAT test. He didn't expect to get a good score, and the story doesn't really get into why he promised his mother to take the SAT. Maybe he was hoping that it would reveal some type of learning disability. I don't know. But when his score came back, he scored a 1480 out of a 1600 on the SAT. Now, if you're not familiar with how high that score is, a 1480 will put you at the top 1%. A 1480 means that you outperform the majority of the SAT test takers. This, th this score can get you into Harvard. So his mother, knowing, knowing her child, asked, did you cheat? He swore to her he didn't cheat. And in the senior year, he realized that he must be smart. And he decides to apply himself and starts attending his classes. He stops hanging around with certain crowds. And the teachers and students alike seem to take notice and started to treat him differently. He graduates, attends community college, goes on to Wichita State and eventually to an Ivy League college, and he goes on to become a very successful magazine entrepreneur. Now maybe you're thinking, okay, well, he was smart to begin with. Maybe he just needed a standardized test to unlock his potential. Maybe he was bored with the curriculum, bored with high school academics. Maybe the work didn't challenge him enough. No, my friend, this isn't the story. So 12 years later, the man gets a letter in the mail from Princeton, New Jersey. He doesn't think much about it. He eventually opens the letter and it turns out that the SAT board periodically reviews their test taking procedures. And he was one of 13 people sent the wrong SAT score. His actual score was 740. Now think about that for a minute. Don't let that fact escape you. Here was this young man, failing high school, takes the SAT, gets a bogus score back, adjusts his behavior, starts acting like a 1480 student, makes some adjustments, and becomes successful after he applies himself. After he starts acting like a 1480 student, his life radically changed. The students noticed. The teachers noticed. So, I have a question. Is what you believe more important than your current reality? I'm going to say that again. Is what you believe more important than your current reality? I think among many things, this story demonstrates how powerful belief is and how it can radically change the trajectory of one's life because you see the reality was he was a 740 student that behaved like a 1480 student he was a 740 student that behaved like a 1480 student now you may be thinking okay well that's a great story great for him how does this apply to me in my life would it be fair to suggest you become what you believe it was Henry Ford who said whether you think you can or you think you can't you're right so what you believe can have a negative effect on you as well many of you may be familiar with the fable of the eagle who was raised by a chicken and there's many variations of this fable, but it basically says something to the effect of an eagle egg ended up in this chicken coop and the chickens took care of the egg and sat on it and kept it warm until it eventually hatched. And here you have this eagle that was being raised by chickens and the eagle 
thought he was a chicken because that's all that was around him. He thought like a chicken. He spoke like a chicken. He acted like a chicken. And isn't that a strange reflection of the human experience? That we often adapt to our environment. We often acclimate to those around us. A lot of us were from poverty-stricken neighborhoods where we felt there was a ceiling to our success. There was only so far we can go. And so this eagle was doing what the chickens were doing. He was scratching the ground looking for grubs and worms. And one day he looked up and he seen a group of mighty eagles soaring in the sky. And he said, what kind of birds are those? Look how graceful and powerful and free they look. And he asked another chicken, who, who are they? And the chicken replied, oh, those are eagles. But don't worry yourself about that. You'll never be able to fly like that. We're chickens. We don't soar like that. And the eagle continued staring up at the other eagles above, dreaming that he could be like them. And though he loved his home and he loved his family, his spirit yearned for more. And though this is just a fable, what's true in this story is also true with us. You may be living amongst people that you love, that you care about, but they can't invest in you. They can't pour into you what they don't have. They could only recreate who they are in you. Sometimes that root of a new belief has to come from the outside. Sometimes it comes in the form of a faulty SAT score. Sometimes it comes visually where you see something and you say, hey, I could see myself accomplishing that. I could see myself getting that degree. I could see myself being a family man and enjoying the dynamic, loving relationship of family. I can see myself in that vehicle. I could see myself signing the loan for my new home. I could see myself in that suit. I could see myself leading a meeting in a boardroom. You fill in the blanks because this principle of belief it's powerful and the beauty of it is no matter where you find yourself at today you could be sitting in a jail cell or you could be sitting in an executive suite you could incorporate this principle of belief and change your circumstances change your outcome change your future so what is it that you believe about yourself is there areas in your life where you know there's more is there areas in your life where there's a weak belief system? There's a false belief system that dominates that area that you need to address. People where I'm from don't get accepted into those types of universities. People from my neighborhood don't own businesses, don't buy houses. Listen, there's a quote and I don't know who originated it, but it says, you will change when the pain of remaining the same becomes greater than the pain of change. And changing what you believe can be frightening. Any type of change, there's an element of fear. But I'll leave you with this. God has not given you a spirit of cowardice, but of power, love, and self-discipline. Well, thank you once again for joining us here at the Boxcar Joe Show, where we're dedicated to producing fire content strictly for your pleasure and enjoyment. If you got any value out of this or you know someone that might, feel free to share it and hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and we look forward to seeing you back here next week at the Boxcar Joe Show.